Normally, when you think of society with its history, democratic traditions, and science, you think there's no relationship between the two. One talks about the laws of nature, one talks about society, but there's an incredible link between them. You see, science is the engine of prosperity. You take away science and we're back to the Stone Age. However, you'd never know it. You'd never know it. I mean, think of all the stuff you hear on television. All the stuff you hear about movie stars and the latest gossip and the scandals. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's all made available because of high-tech fiber optics, the internet, satellite technology. And what do we do with it? Talk about movie stars and gossip and who's going out with who and who cheated on who. You'd never believe that all of it was made possible by science. Well, yeah, I took history when I was in high school. You learn about the kings and queens and the dates of wars. And afterwards, you think to yourself, this is really stupid. I mean, I'm going to forget that's the day after the exam because I'm never going to use it again. And sure enough, the day after the exam, you forget all the kings and queens and dates and you're perfectly fine. Well, one day I had the shock of my life in a history class. One day we learned about the year 1500. 500 years ago, yes, think of the world back then. If you were to guess which civilization would go on to dominate the world 500 years later, if you were an alien from Mars landing on the Earth in the year 1500 and had to take a bet as to which civilization would dominate the world, you'd say, well, it's obvious, China or maybe the Muslim Empire. It's clear. They had the greatest armies. They were at peace. They discovered gunpowder. They discovered the compass. Algebra is an Arabic word. The names of the stars, Algol, Altair, they're all Arab names. So you think that the Chinese and the Muslims would dominate the world. And then Europe? Ha! Give me a break. Europe? They were snarled by the Taliban, the Christian fundamentalists, the Inquisition. The Christians in the Europe, Europe were spending most of their time persecuting each other, torturing each other, having inquisitions and witch trials. Science? Forget about it. There was no science. You realize that in 1500, Europe was a net importer of science? Net importer of science. Science was originated in China, the Muslim Empire, and Europe? Forget about it. Well, what happened? Think about it. What happened? Why am I speaking English? How come I'm not speaking Arabic today? How come I'm not speaking Chinese today? How come most people speak English? I mean, what happened in the year 1500? Well, if you think about it, China, the Muslim world, had a huge head start. Europe was flailing about, drowning in its own fundamentalism and witch trials and inquisitions. What happened was science. You see, in China, the emperor one day assembled the greatest fleet known to history to find out what's out there, who can challenge imperial China. This fleet was enormous, the biggest fleet the world had ever seen. We wouldn't see a fleet this big for another 400 years. Well, that fleet went out, found lots of tigers, lions, elephants, bears, giraffes, exotic animals, and brought them to China. And the emperor saw them saw all these exotic animals paraded before the Chinese emperor, and I paraphrase, the emperor then said, is that all? I mean, is that all? Just lions, tigers, bears, crocodiles, giraffes? I mean, that's it? There's no one to challenge imperial China? We're number one? And after that, they burned the boats. That's right, they burned the whole fleet. And, and China went into 500 years of scientific darkness. The same thing happened for the, with the Muslim Empire. In fact, the former, former Prime Minister of Malaysia once wrote an article for a newspaper saying that yes, in the year around 1500, the Muslim world turned inward. They, were, they had great armies. They almost conquered Europe for that matter, but they turned inward into doctrinaire thinking rather than looking at nature, which was the source of the greatness of the Muslim empire. And they turned inward and got weaker and weaker and weaker until the Ottoman empire became the, the laughingstock of Europe, the sick man of Europe. While what happened in Europe? We had the Renaissance. We had 
the Reformation. We had trade, ideas, the printing press. The printing press allowed millions of books to circulate within Europe within just 50 years or so. So all of a sudden, ideas were being circulated, experiments were being done. The Renaissance ushered in a whole great era of scientific investigation. Modern science, as we knew it, was born in Europe with Galileo.